Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I bring you Brusho and Science. And this is not the science of Brusho because I don't know how it does its magic. It just does. <laughs> Brusho is one of the watercolor powders, and this is my collection. I just keep them in a plastic tub. And there's another video I link to here that you can go and see how I made my little color code lids. And I poked holes in the top and put thumbtacks in to hold the watercolor powder inside. That's another video. So today I just want to show you a project with these. And I'm going to start with a uh, die set from My Favorite Things. This one has these really cool little beakers and science things and stuff. And I thought this would be really fun to leave the die set intact first. And with some of my die sets, I like to do that if, it's a, if there's an interesting pattern or if I think I can somehow use that all in one fell swoop and die cut a bunch of things all at once and not cut the dies apart. So I decided to do that for this one. I've got my piece on the top is Canson Arches watercolor paper. And for this particular technique, you don't have to use watercolor paper except for underneath because that's where the color is going to go. So this is the Canson Arches rough for both the top layer and the bottom layer that I'm using. I've painted the water through this, basically the stencil. I've made myself a stencil painted it through and then expanded it so that the color will go out from underneath and, and then I don't have to really worry about the placement of the top layer quite so much. You'll see how that plays out as we get on further. And then some of the watercolor powder moves as soon as it hits water, but then if it's dried up a little bit, so if I wait too long and I'm too slow at this, then I'll need to add a little bit more water or move the color around with my brush slightly. But just putting the clean water through the stencil when I look at it at an angle, when I pull this up, I can see exactly where those spots of water are and be able to expand them. You can't really see from the overhead view, but I've got my head tilted at an angle so I can see. And you might want to add more water there because the more the water puddles up a little bit when you drop that color in, it's, it's going to just move on its own. So since I'm doing this on a video, it took me a little longer to make sure I had everything ready. So most of these I do move with a brush, but if you time it right and you have all your colors ready and handy, you don't even have to move them at all. But you can see you get a very granular look, or if you move it around, you can also get a much smoother look. Or what I wanted was a combination because I think the texture of the brush -o really comes out looking science-y, if you know what I mean. It, like all of the the different types of mixtures that you would get in beakers I think would swirl like this color does. And I'm drying it in between using my Hero Arts heating heat embossing gun because I want to stop the color from moving. I don't want it to keep going and I also don't want it on the back of this piece in the front and then start smooshing color around. That would just be a mess. So I'm just drying it in between. And if you allow it to air dry you'll get smoother color because the crystals just keep moving and breaking down. So you'll potentially get a little smoother of a look if you let it air dry. So heat setting it will retain some of that beautiful granularity. So I'm skipping some of the steps to just show you how the powder is going on. And the other thing about these powders, one of the reasons that dropping it into a little puddle of water like this works is because where there's not water, then the color won't stick. So if I've over sprinkled a little bit and it's well beyond, you can see there's some spots where there's little little sprinkles of powder on the non-wet areas, when I heat set it, or you can even just blow it off with your breath, that's going to just come off the paper because there's no moisture there. So that's one of the really fun things with Brusho, and I've done a few videos on Brusho. I'll link you to the whole playlist at the end so you can check out all of it, as well as my getting started with Brusho post that I referred to earlier that shows how I made the little lids on top and why I made them on top and everything. So I'm just going to continue filling in all these sections one by one so I have color in all of them when I finish the card. And I'm painting a little extra around the edges. There's some of them that after putting the mask over I realized I hadn't made enough of it. So I can just keep adding little bits and pieces until this whole thing starts to come together. Now you could do this with any die set or you can do it with a like a whole background die and do the same kind of an idea. So it's really flexible and I think it's going to give us a lot of fun things that we can do with dyes that we have. I'm going to heat set it again and I want to talk a little bit about why I like brusho so much because there's 
a couple different kinds of watercolor powders. I do like the colors of the Brusho much more than some of the others. The others are a little brighter in some of the other brands, but the other thing that I really like about these is that they're less expensive. They are artist grade, which means they're going to be light fast, but they are not expensive. And usually artist grade things are way more expensive. So that's a bonus with these. And when I say expensive, they may look like they're the same cost, but if you look at the cost per gram, these bottles have more per gram than some of the other brands. So when you're comparing things and trying to price them out and get yourself a good deal, make sure you look at how much you're getting for the money you're spending, because sometimes it's disguised by the fact that the bottles may look like they're the same size, but there's less content inside. So just heat setting, and you can see how these colors just move, like when that, that green was in a puddle, it just moves as the, the heat moves it, the air moves it. There's so many techniques you can do with brusho, and a lot of it you can just spritz some on a background and let it let it go wild and have a lot of fun with it. So here I'm gonna try to line it up and make sure I've got all my pieces the way I want them, and is everything covered up the way I wish, and there's my finished one. So I just glued it down. I had some stick it actually on the back of it and forgot to tell you that part of the beginning. Stick it is a product that will make your sheet adhesive. And then I put it on my card. Those little shapes in the bottom underneath the sentiment looked a little odd. They're the ones that go on top of the, the little beaker dies. So they didn't make sense on the card. I just covered them up with the sentiment. Super easy to do because there is a stamp set that goes with this. So I'm using mostly the dies, but the sentiment is from the stamp set. Now I wanted to do a second card because I have all those pieces that I die cut out and I wanted to use them, but I also wanted to show you that you can paint also just an image with brusho. Lots of people just use it for backgrounds, but you can still use it for an image as well. And I'll show you a couple different ways to do things like skin tone. So I'm starting out with this little image, another by MFT, and I'm just going to paint her skin tones with water and then shake a little bit of sandstone into it. Sandstone is one of the tan-ish kinds of colors and just kind of tapping on a little bit. My holes sometimes clog up over time and you just, you know, re-poke the hole, take the little thumbtack that's in it and just twist it around a little bit and then move the color. Now I let it sit there for a minute so that there were some little spots that happened on her face, but you'll watch as, as this goes. I keep moving the color I'll add more color to it. So this arm is very saturated. So some of the little crystals of color were very pigmented. And I'm just moving some of that color to other areas. I'm moving it around, moving it around. And some of it, you if you just wait and let it dry, let it air dry, remember I was saying before that some of those colors will smooth out, you'll end up with things like that face might smooth out some. So don't throw it away right away. Don't panic. Just give it time and let it kind of do its thing because these watercolor powders like to continue to move with water. Now her arm is looking darker than everything else. Easy enough to just tap it off with a little piece of paper towel. I can do the same thing with all the other colors that I want to do. So I've got her her little Valentine all ready to roll. I'm going to take some of the red and tap it into that outside area. And again, if I sprinkle over top and, and get some red in an area that I don't want it, it's not going to stick unless there's water there. If you do spritzing, and lots of brusho techniques involve spritzing water, it's a little tougher to do because you'll get a little, you know, a little drop here and there that spritz that you might not have realized, and that that color will stick to it. But if you're just applying it very simply with a brush, then it's really easy to keep that watercolor powder under control. And then she looks like she's holding a watercolored Valentine. You could certainly use all different kinds of watercolors or coloring mediums to color something like this, but it's really fun to get that look that you get from Brusho. The brush I'm using is a Black Velvet Round Number no. 6 by the Silver Brush Company. They're, they make my favorite brushes for watercolor. They point really well. They get very fine points on the edge, which is why I like them, because they, they work great with tiny stamped images that we use in our paper crafting. Now I've painted water into her hair and then shook the dark brown on. You can see some color on her face, some of those little speckles. When I heat set the hair, it's going to blow right off because her face is really, really dry. If her face was even damp, 
then those little speckles would stay. So you want to make sure you keep it really, really differentiated. Dry between colors all the time because then your brush won't stick. So you can see it came right off. Now I wanted to add some more color to her face and add a little bit of shading. So I started sh by shaking off a little bit onto my work surface, which is a craft assistant by Ellen Hudson, a metal 12 by 12 that cleans up really nicely. I started painting it on and I left in this little mistake area that's coming up in just a moment because I touched my brush to the brown area and I had a lot of water on it. Now the brown had been dry, but it still moves. It's still watercolor and it's not going to be permanent. So I did just dab it off with a paper towel and it came off just fine. So as long as you catch things right away, there's often <laughs> ways that you can recover from oopses like that. And just keep paper towels on hand at all times. That's just what I do because I'm always making little mistakes. So now I wanted to put some sea green in her shirt. And I wanted to show you some different things you can do as well. So I'm going to paint around and just kind of move the color around with my brush. And it's going to get, it's really sopped in water right now. There's tons of water in this. And you can see the color is just really moving. And I'm trying to clean off my brush so I don't add too much water to it. But it just keeps, you know, feeling like I've got way too much on here. I've moved the color around. It got really dark. But look what happens. Dabbing it off, you can get a really soft light color. Now I've got some of that color still left in the brush. So I'm adding some in the areas where I wanted a little bit of shading. And I'm going to let it be kind of speckly and let it look like kind of loose fabric and I even can add a little bit more of the powder just a tiny bit so I can get more of that brush -o look and just move the color around so I get the texture that I want so even though brush -o is one of those things that you know we're, we're used to thinking about just spritz it and let it run you can also get a semi-controlled look out of it now I had a little bit of the sea green that had gone into her skirt so I just made her skirt blue and then no one will know the difference that I had some of that green uh, kind of painted over into the skirt area and then I added a little bit of gamboge into the heart because you gotta have a little yellow on things right so there's our little girl she's all done and ready to go and now it's time to prep the rest of the card using some pieces from the earlier cards that were left over so first I'm going to start out by making a background I've got my distress sprayer out and, I'm, and I've got a piece of frog tape covering my sentiment so I'm spraying the whole thing. I'm not worrying about that bottom section. I want the color just on the top section because I'm going to do a shelf full of beakers and I want to have a spray of color looking like all those beakers are just bubbling over and it's like this big cloud of cool smoke. So instead of masking off the bottom section before I did the water, I just held a piece of cardstock over it, just a piece of scratch, so I could shake the color on and it's only going to go on that top section. You can see how fun the brush is when you just add water. I'm spritzing both afterward as well as beforehand just to get that bubbled over crazy wild look of brush -o. And then to cool it down because it's a little too intense for the color that I wanted, I just took a paper towel roll and went right over it. Peeled that sucker up and now I have a background ready. All the little pieces that were left over, these little tiny ones, I just shook some brush on each one of them super easy to do and let them air dry. I attached them to their beakers that were already die cut as well so I'm using up all those pieces and then made a little shelf out of them so she's reading her valentine over top of this shelf full of crazy giant beakers. I just think this came out adorable and I love my beaker bubbles for you as a sentiment. Isn't that a blast? I've included a couple more brush -o videos for you. That center one is the getting started with watercolor powders so it compares a few of the different kinds and will get you some information on how you can make the little toppers that I made for mine. There's also two other brush -o videos you might be interested in. You can hit the subscribe button if you're not yet a subscriber. Find me all over the web as Sandy Alnock, and I will see you out there in the social world. Have a fabulous day and go paint something. Paint something fun. Bye-bye now.